Today in the workshop, we're examining the Siduino Xiao ESP32 S3 Sense Board. You'll see how we can use the Xiao's camera, microphone, SD card, and touch switch to build a camera that takes pictures and records sound. We'll also upgrade the camera module for improved performance. Good things come in small packages, so welcome to the workshop. Well hello and welcome to the workshop and today we're going to be working with an ESP32 camera board. Now when you think about ESP32 camera boards of course the first thing that comes to mind is the AI Thinker board, the ESP32 Cam. For $9 this board is an incredible value and yes you can still get it for $9 if you order it from places like AliExpress. If you buy it from a local vendor chances are it'll be a bit more. But even at that case it is a great value. So new ESP32 camera boards really have a lot to live up to. While this new board we're working with today is from Seed Studio and it's the Seedwino Xiao ESP32 S3 Sense board. And this board costs five dollars more than the ESP32 cam board but for that extra five bucks you do get quite a few different features. For example this board has a USB-C connector whereas the ESP32 cam required an adapter adapter or an FTDI adapter in order to connect to it. This board also has a built-in microphone which the ESP32 cam does not and one really neat feature of this board is that you can power it with a 3.7 volt LiPo battery and you can recharge the battery using the USB-C so I think that's great. So what we're going to do today is take a look at the Seduino Xiao ESP32 Sense board. The Seduino Xiao ESP32 S3 Sense actually consists of two boards, a camera module and the Xiao ESP32 S3 board itself. The camera model has a standard OV2640 camera on it. It also has a digital MEMS microphone and a micro SD card. There are also two additional GPIO pins on the camera module. The ESP32 S3 Sense board has an ESP32 S3 R8 microcontroller, 8 megabytes of pseudo static RAM and 8 megabytes of flash RAM, an onboard battery charger with an indicator, it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the board has a USB-C connector, it also has an antenna connector and a small board to board connector for attaching the camera module. The Xiao board has two very tiny push buttons, a reset button and a boot button. There are also two LEDs, a red LED that is both the power LED and a charging indicator for the battery, as well as an amber user LED. At the bottom of the board we can see the UFL connector for the antenna and the board to board connector for the camera module. The top of the board is dominated by the USB-C connector which provides both data and power connectivity. Most of the pins on the Seduino Xiao ESP32 S3 have multiple purposes and this board has the same pinouts as the other members of the Seduino Xiao family. Note that the 5 volt line is both an input and an output. You can use it to power the board but you'll need to insert a Schottky diode in series. It can also be used as an output from the USB-C connector. Note that there is no output here when the board is being powered by a battery. The 3.3 volts is an output from the board, not an input. There are a number of connections on the bottom of the board as well. There are additional connections for the USB-C bus. The connections for the battery are on the bottom of the board. There are a number of connections that come from the board to board connector. And there is also a thermal pad where you can measure the temperature of the board. The camera module has an additional two GPIO connections. When discussing the Seduino Xiao ESP32 S3 Sense board, inevitably the comparison with an ESP32 cam will come up. Here's how they compare. As you can see from this chart, the Seduino Xiao ESP32 S3 Sense board has in most cases the same or more features than the ESP32 cam. 
The one exception seems to be the white flash LED, which the ESP32 cam has, and which is not included on the Xiao board. The Siduino Xiao ESP32 S3 Sense is packaged with a stick-on antenna. The onboard camera can be upgraded to a 5 megapixel OV5640 module. You can also buy the Xiao ESP32 S3 Sense board separately without the camera module. So now let's start using the Siduino Xiao ESP32 S3 Sense board. Now one thing I've always been amused by with Cedino products is the way that they package them. They look like something that you'd find at the checkout stand in the supermarket uh, hanging on a little shelf. But this is the package that the Cedino Shao ESP3 Sense comes in. And uh, when you open it up, this is what you get inside the package. We have the Shao itself, which is the uh, little board over here. Now it doesn't come with any header pins soldered onto it, nor are there header pins in the package. So you're going to have to solder some pins on yourself. Uh, as you can see the board, we can see its main features, the USB-C connector, the antenna connector, and the little board-to-board -board connector over here. Uh, it's very difficult to see, but there are indeed a couple of push buttons across here. They're very, very tiny. Uh, if we flip it over, we can see the connections on the bottom that uh, I showed you in the explainer, including the larger ones here for the battery and a thermal pad where you can measure the temperature of the board. If we take a look at the camera board, it's also, of course, a very tiny little thing. It's got the standard camera on it over here. Underneath the camera, you can see the USB-C connection. And uh, if we flip the bottom, you'll see the connector for the uh, on the board to board connector here, as well as a couple of extra solder pads as well. And this is the little antenna that they give you. Personally, I think this is sort of the weak spot of the system. It's not a particularly good antenna, but because it uses a standard U.FL connector, you could use another antenna as well. So this is what you get when you unpackage a Ciduino Shao ESP32 Sense board. Now here's a visual comparison between the Ciduino Xiao ESP32 S3 Sense board and a couple of other popular ESP32 camera boards that we've worked with before here in the DroneBot workshop. Now the center one here of course is the famous ESP32 cam board, the one you're probably the most familiar with. As you can see size-wise it's about double the size of the Ciduino Xiao. Uh, otherwise it's a pretty similar board, it's got the micro SD card underneath the camera in a similar fashion to the way the Shao does. It has that nice big white LED that you use for a flash. It's the only one of these boards that has that. And on the bottom over here we've got an antenna connection and a built-in antenna and you use these resistors over here, these surface mount ones. You change the position in order to select the antenna that you're going to use. Now this board of course does not have a USB connector on it. You need an external FTDI adapter or a plug-in adapter with a USB on it. Now this board over here that we've used in a few projects is the ESPi and in many ways it's more of a better comparison to the Ciduino board because this board also has the MEMS microphone on it the way that the Ciduino board has and uh, so you can see it's about twice the size again of the Xiao board. Uh, it's got a little connector in the back, it's got a micro USB down over here and this is the antenna arrangement on this board over here. You only have the choice of an internal one. It also doesn't have that many GPIO connections on it as well, so the Ciduino beats it in that. In fact, the Ciduino has as many GPIOs as the ESP32 CAM board. So at any rate, you can see for the size comparison, the Ciduino does indeed win, except for this big large antenna over here. Otherwise, uh, you can see that uh, we've now got another board in the ever-expanding family of ESP32 cameras. Now I've got a couple of accessories over here that you can use with the new Ciduino Shao board and you can use these accessories with any Ciduino Shao. They're for the Ciduino Shao family. Now the first one over here is a prototyping board and uh, we've used this one before. The Shao itself sits over here on the board and if you can see there's some little pins on the board here. If you look on the bottom of the Ciduino Shao, right underneath the USB you'll see some little pins and these 
please make contact with it and it allows the USB to power the rest of the board. And this board's pretty neat. It's got a uh, OLED display on it, a push button, a buzzer. It's got a number of connections for I squared C and UART over here using the Grove connection system. And this is a system that Seed Studio uses for a number of its different products. It's got a connector for a LiPo battery over here. On the bottom of it, it's got a micro SD card and a coin cell connector. So it's a really great way to prototype some of the Seedwino Shao stuff. Another prototyping board, which uh, I just think is really cute and is bound to be used on an episode of the DroneBot workshop is this one over here. This round circle is actually a round OLED display and if you flip over the back it's got a socket on it over here for the Seedwino Shao. It's got a connector for an external battery. It's got a connector for a coin cell. A, another micro SD connector on it over here. An on off switch. And so you can build yourself a really neat uh, meter or maybe even an oversized watch using something like this. So these are a couple of prototyping accessories. They work for all the Seedwino Shao boards including the new Seedwino Shao ESP32 S3. Sense. Okay, now that we know a little bit more about our new ESP CAM board, let's put it to use. Now the first thing we need to do, of course, is set up our Arduino IDE, and that's pretty simple because this board doesn't require its own boards manager. It uses the Expressive ESP32 boards manager. Now you're going to need to have the latest version of that boards manager, so make sure yours is updated, but otherwise the only thing we need to do in the IDE is make a setting for the PS or pseudo-static RAM, and we're good to go. So let's go and do that and give our camera a quick test. Now before we can start using our new ESP32 S3 Sense board with the Arduino IDE, we're going to need to set a few things up. The first thing is to make certain that we've identified the device correctly, and my setup has identified it correctly as a Xiao ESP32 S3, but it's quite possible that when you plug it in, it'll be identified as a different ESP32. You don't need a separate boards manager for this product, just a standard ESP32 boards manager will work work and you just need to go in and make certain that you've actually selected a Xiao ESP32 S3 and not another ESP32 S3 that might come up instead. Now the second thing you need to do, and this is very important, is we need to set it up to use pseudo static or PS RAM. So go into tools and then go down where it says PS RAM. You'll notice mine says disabled. That's wrong. We want to set it to OPI PS RAM like this over here. And once you've made those two settings, we can start using the Sheedwino Shao ESP32 S3 with our Arduino IDE. Now one situation you might find arises from time to time is that you're using your Seedwino Shao and all of a sudden you try to upload to it and it's not available. This little idiosyncrasy happened to me a couple of times and it can be resolved by putting the Shao into bootloader mode and I'll show you how to do that. Now as I've mentioned before there are two incredibly tiny switches on the Shao. There's a boot key right over here. I'm not sure if you can see it. it's this little silver dot. What you need to do is you need to press this down. I'm using the pointer from my tablet here. There. And you insert the USB with the power and then release the boot button. And that should put it into bootloader mode. Now again, it's a very, very tiny little switch. You'll have to find something non-conductive uh, to use on it. I use the little pointer from my tablet because it's non-conductive. Uh, certainly don't use a little screwdriver or something because you could short something out. But it's just something you'll run into every now and then. One other little idiosyncrasy I ran into was a couple of times I uploaded the sketch and nothing happened. And it was simply resolved by pulling pulling out and putting back in the USB-C. Now it only happened a few times to me, but I thought I'd pass it on to you just in case you run into the same situation. 
Now to test out the ESP32-S3 Sense camera, the easiest thing to do is to use the camera web server sketch. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Now you need to have a recent copy of this sketch because it needs to have the definition for the Ciduino Xiao camera. And this is the definition for it over here. And you can take a look in your camera pins file to see if you actually have that. Here it is on 179 of the camera pins file. And it's of course got all the various pinouts that it needs for the uh, Ciduino Xiao ESP32 S3 Sense board. Now the only other thing we need to do to camera web server is to give it the SSID and the password or you could consider using Wi-Fi manager as I showed you in my earlier video and eliminate the need to put SSID and password into it. But I'm just going to do it the standard way. I'm going to load it up to my camera board and we'll see what it looks like. And so I've loaded camera web server onto the Xiao ESP32 S3 Sense board. And here's the setup that I'm going to be using to demonstrate it. I've got a few things for the Xiao to look at right now. I've got a multimeter over here, which has got some nice orangish yellow on it. Plus it's got the red and black leads. We've got my robot with his blue background and his red arms and his white eyes over here. And you can even see some of the labels on the side over here. So it gives it a variety of things to look at and I've just got it mounted over here on a magnetic clip uh, again, it's not the easiest camera in the world to mount because it flaps around over here But of course if you're building a project out of it, you'd find some way of sensing it I'm using a better quality antenna right now because I find that it gives me a better video stream And we can go and take a look at camera web server I'm going to take a 640 by 480 and I will start my stream and we'll take a look at my stream and the stream doesn't look too bad. I'm getting some pretty good colors on both the robot background and on the side of the multimeter. The red and the black leads look pretty good. I guess the um, labels are a little bit off the side. We'll just turn our camera around a little bit to see what we can see. It's a little out of the range for it. But all in all, not too bad. It's pretty well what you would expect from the ESP32 cam. Uh, the quality is about the same. The stream quality is about the same. Uh, so there you have a very tiny ESP32 cam in the form of the Ciduino Xiao ESP32 S3 Sense board. So now that we've got our ESP32 S3 Sense board working, it's time to actually put it to use. Now there are a number of things, of course, that you could build with a board like this. And Seed Studio has some great projects that use Edge Impulse with this board. Now you may recall Edge Impulse was a product that we used a little while ago in order to do object detection with ESP32 cameras. And of course you can do that with this new camera as well. Another thing you can do is you can do sound detection and train it on audio because of course this device has a built-in microphone. Now those experiments are quite well detailed on the Seed Studio Wiki for this product and I'll leave you a link to that in the article accompanying this video but we're not going to go through those experiments today. There's really no point in repeating that. Instead I put together a little experiment that uses a number of the main elements of this board. What it is is a camera. It's a still picture camera. Camera. But when you take a picture, it also records 10 seconds of audio to go along with this picture. And in order to use everything on this board, we've already used the camera, the microphone, and the SD card, we're also going to use the touch switch. And so the touch switch is how you're going to initiate a picture. It's just an experiment, but you could actually turn it into a practical product. So let's go and take a look at the different elements in this experiment, see how we hook it up, and then I'll show you the code for it. The Xiao makes use of the popular OV2640 camera module. This is the same module that is used in the ESP32 cam. This module was originally released in 2005 by Omnivision. In 2009, Omnivision discontinued the OV2640, but it's still available from many other manufacturers. One of the reasons for the camera's popularity is that it has internal hardware JPEG compression. This can reduce the size of the image by up to 25 times, making it much easier for microcontrollers to process it. The OV2640 has a quarter-inch sensor and it has a 1600 by 1200 array of pixels. 
It's capable of SVGA or 800 by 600 resolution at 30 frames per second. To work with this module, we'll be using the camera library, which is included in the Arduino IDE when you install the ESP32 board manager. I won't even begin to read you off the parts number of the microphone on the board. I think it sets the record for the longest part number I've ever seen. This is a MEMS or Microelectrical Mechanical Microphone. MEMS microphones are integrated circuits that are etched to have a microphone on them with all the mechanical elements etched onto the circuit chip. It has a PDM digital output. The microphone uses the I2S interface. If you're not familiar with I2S, I've done a video on using it with the ESP32 and you might want to check that out. This MEMS microphone has a maximum sound pressure level of 140 decibels. We'll be working with this using the I2S library, which is also included when you install the ESP32 Boards Manager. Our project will also use a micro SD card. We can accept micro SD cards with a maximum size of 32 gigabytes. You must format the micro SD with FAT32. One of the easiest ways of doing this is to use the Microsoft Windows File Manager, but there are also other utilities that can assist you with this. As with all CD cards, our micro SD uses the SPI bus, and we'll be using a number of libraries with it the SPI library, the SD library, and the FS library for the file system. All of these are already included in your IDE. And finally, our project will rely on touch switches. The Seduino Shao has nine touch switch inputs. These switches have an adjustable sensitivity. There are many touch switch examples in the sample code and you should check them out. In our case, we're going to be running the touch switch in a mode where it causes an interrupt every time it's touched or released. All of the functions for dealing with the touch switch are already in your Arduino IDE. Now in our application, we're only going to be using one of the touch switches, touch one on the very first pin. So the only wiring for our project is to connect the wire to touch one and then connect it to a touch plate of sorts. This can be as simple as a small piece of wire. Once you've got that hooked up, we can take a look at the code for our voice recording camera. Now here's the sketch for our voice recording camera, and you'll notice there's actually three files. There's also the camera index and camera pins file, and these are just two standard ESP32 cam files that you can copy over into the same directory that you have your code. Now, we'll start off with the sketch uh, by showing you which libraries it includes. We include, of course, the Arduino and ESP32 camera library. The FS library is for the file system. SD library is for the micro SD card, and SPI library is how we interface with the micro SD. So all three of these are basically for the micro SD. And then I2S is the I2S library that we need for the microphone. Now we'll start by defining what kind of a camera that we have, and this relates back to the camera pins uh, file over here, and of course we'll include that file as well. Then we'll set up the amount of record time in seconds. I'm setting mine for 10 seconds. If you want to adjust that, if you think it's too long, or maybe even too short, you can. Don't go over 240 seconds, which is a pretty long recording. Now some audio settings, the sample rate, uh, the sample size. One parameter here you might want to experiment with is this one here, the volume gain. I've got it set to three. If the sound is too low, you can try raising that. I'd be very careful doing that though, because eventually it'll just start to distort. Now we have a couple of status variables for both the camera and the SD. They're booleans that we initialize as false. We have a file counter, and this is going to be used to create the name of our file. We'll start it off with a value of one. And this is the threshold for our touch switch. Now this should work okay for you, but if it doesn't, you can experiment with it. But this value is pretty good for the ESP32. And we have a Boolean as well that uh, indicates if the touch switch has been detected and we'll set it as false. Now we'll go into a couple of functions, which I'll just touch over here. The first one is that we are going to save the pictures to an SD card. So this is photo save and we pass it the file name of the photo that we're going to save. Now this function itself calls another function called write file, which you'll find below it. And this writes to the micro SD card. So just make sure everything is written correctly. 
Now below that we have record wav that records the wave file and we provided the string which is the file name and it puts a bunch of parameters into here and it starts recording the sound. Now when it goes to uh, save the sound it needs to generate a header for the wave file so it calls something called generate wave header so if we go further down over here we'll see that we've generated wave header. This is not my own work but you can see the reference for it over here and this gives you all the different header information for a wave file so if you've ever been interested in that well this will break it down for you now this very small function here is the callback function when the touch switch is touched and as most callbacks it's a very simple function that uh, doesn't do very much. You want it to be quick. And all we do is we set the value of this boolean to true to say that the touch switch has indeed been detected. Now this last one that says camera parameters, these are actually values that belong in the setup, but it makes the setup very long. So I just stuck them into their own function and nothing else. So these are just a bunch of parameters that belong in setup. And now we get to the actual setup. So we'll start the serial monitor and we'll wait for it to begin because we want to see the serial monitor because it's going to be getting the information about when we're taking pictures. Uh, the I squared set S setup over here. So we'll set this up for the microphone. And then we attach the touch switch uh, to its interrupt handler. And we define the camera parameters. Uh, you saw that earlier. So we'll define the camera parameters and initialize. That's all that stuff that I copied up there because it was too much for the setup. If the uh, camera is good, if we make it this far, we'll set the status to true. We'll say that the serial monitor, the camera is okay and we'll go and initialize the micro SD card so we'll initialize the SD assuming it initializes correctly we'll go and grab the card type and uh, the card type will be displayed over here onto the serial monitor so we'll not only acknowledge that we have a micro SD but we'll tell you what type of micro SD and then we'll set the status to true for the SD card then we go into the loop where you can really understand where everything works first of all we make certain of course that the camera and the SD SD card are okay. Then we see if the touch switch has been detected. If it has been detected, then we know we've been touched. We need to take a picture. We'll print that to the serial monitor and we'll use this to create a file name. Now we're going to take the file count and concatenate it to the name image.jpg. So it'll be image1.jpg for our first one, image2.jpg for our second one, etc. Then we'll go and take a picture and pass it that file name and we'll save that picture. Then we go for the audio file. We're going to say that we're going to record so many seconds of sound. It'll be a default of 10, but you could have changed that. We'll do the same thing to generate a name for our audio file. And you'll notice we're calling it image. That may be a little bit confusing, but the reason I did that is that the only difference with this file is it's got an extension of WAV because it's a WAV file. And if we name it the same as the picture file, then when we list it in the directory, the pictures and their associated WAV files will be next to each other. So I kept it as image something dot wave. And then we'll record the audio, save it, increment that file counter for the next time. Down here we'll reset that touch variable so we're ready for it, apply a short delay, and go back into the loop. So the loop actually pretty well shows you how everything works and it itself is fairly simple. So let's take this sketch and load it up and see if we can get our camera with voice recording working. All right, well, we're ready to test our camera slash voice recorder with the touch switch activation. Now, testing out a camera on the Seduino Shao is not that easy when you're trying to mount the camera. The camera on the Shao is just uh, mounted on its own cable, so it kind of flops around there. You could secure it to the micro SD card in the same way that you do with the ESP32 cam. However, you'd have to place quite a kink in the cable. So I've just got it arranged on a little mount here on my workbench and it's about 30 centimeters or a foot away from a target over here and what I'm going to do is take a picture of the target announce that I'm taking a picture of the target background and then I've got a few things like this Seduino shower over here that I'll hold in front of the background and take pictures of it and I will narrate that as well and I decided that would be the test that we're going to do so uh, I've not got the shower connected yet I've got to do that first So I plugged in the micro USB 
And you can see on the screen that it says the camera's okay, and it tells me I've got an SDHC card. So it identified the type of micro USB card I've got. So now I'll just take a picture of the background. And I'll press the touch switch here. This is a picture of the background. It says it's recording my sound. And the sound recording's finished. So it's taken its first picture. It's taken both a JPEG and a WAV file. So now I'll give it something to take a picture of. So this is a Ceduino Shao ESP32 S3 board. Okay, so it looks like we've got a recording there as well. Let's do another one. This is a Ceduino Shao prototyping board. And so now we've saved a third image and a third WAV file. And let's do a final one. This is the back of a Ceduino Shao round display. Okay, I've got my data. So what I'm going to do is power down the Shao, remove the micro SD card, and read it on the computer and see what I've actually got. All right, well, I've plugged the micro SD card into the computer and I've opened it up in the file manager. And as you can see, I've got four sets of JPEG and WAV files labeled image one through image four. Now you'll notice the date on these are set back to the uh, Linux zero date. And of course we never did set the file date inside our software. And for one thing, our file date is unavailable to us because we don't know what date it actually is. That would require some more complex coding and a real-time clock. Okay, so I've got the four images. Let's take a look at them. And here's my first lovely image. As you can see, it's not that lovely, but it's it's all right. Uh, the next one, a little bit out of focus, but we are indeed taking pictures with our camera, and that's what we're set to prove. Okay, so we've looked at our images. Now, the four WAV files, there's a number of different ways you can play WAV files. If you don't have a specific audio application, VLC Media Player will play back WAV files. Uh, you could, of course, use Audacity. That's pretty popular. But one thing I'm going to use is another program you may not have heard of. It's called Ocean Audio. I've got it over here. Now, this is available for Linux, uh, for Windows and Mac. I'm using it under Linux right now. And it's a pretty neat little audio editor. It's not as feature as audacity but it does most of the things you'd want it to do and it does have a neat feature that I didn't even know it had until I tried doing it with these wave files so let me show you I'm going to open up all the waves highlight them all and open with ocean audio and look at that, there's a thumbnail beside each one of the WAV files. Like here's my first one, and it's got the thumbnail beside it that is the corresponding picture. And of course that's because we've got the picture and the audio file named the same. And you can see the different WAV files I've got over here. So I have indeed recorded the WAV. Now the way that I'm set up over here right now, I am not set up to play this right now and have it come through the recording. It has to do with some cabling over here, which is a bit too complex to explain. But what I will do right now is just play this WAV file through the uh, production when I make the video. This is a picture of the background. It says it's recording my sound. This is a Ceduino Shao ESP32 S3 board. This is a Ceduino Shao prototyping board. This is the back of a Ceduino Shao round display. Okay, so it does look like our camera does indeed work. Now, one little caution I want to give you is when you're inserting or removing the micro SD card from the Shao, make sure that you press down on the top module. It's really easy to pop that off of the bottom module, but otherwise it makes for a neat little camera and with a bit of extra code and an enclosure, it might even be a practical device. 
Now the Xiaomi SP32 S3 Sense board comes with a 2 megapixel camera and it's the same 2 megapixel camera module that we used in the ESP32 cam. You can however upgrade the camera module to an OV5640 module which is a 5 megapixel module and of course will give you a better picture. Seed Studio does sell this module in a little kit for the upgrade and I've got one of those kits. So let's go and install the camera camera upgrade. The camera that we'll be upgrading our Xiao to is the OV5640 camera module. This is another OmniVision product and it was released in 2009. It uses OmniVision's patented 5 megapixel camera chip sensor. This is a quarter inch sensor with a 2592 by 1944 pixel array. This camera is capable of HD video at 30 frames per second. It has internal backlighting which improves its low light sensitivity. The camera also has an internal voice coil motor and this provides an integrated autofocus functionality. And so here's the OV5640 module from Seed Studio packaged in their standard packaging and we will open that up and retrieve the contents. And so here are the contents, the camera itself. Now this is the OV5640 camera. And you can see a little module on the end of a very long ribbon cable. And that's about it for the camera. It also comes with a package of heat sinks over here. Now it comes with a big heat sink and a small one. The small one is sized to the back of the camera. My understanding is that the big heat sink can also be used on the back of the camera because these modules get rather warm. Now there are no instructions given with this, by the way. But basically what you need to do is to get this camera module onto here and so it's actually not that difficult to do if you've never used one of these connectors before all you need is something like this small screwdriver here and you place it under here and here if you can see it pops up like a little door there you go the little door is popped up and you can just remove the old one and place the new one in. Make sure that you have the conductors facing down, of course. And fold it, and there we go. And we now have a camera module attached to our Ciduino Chow unit, and we can go and test that. Now at 5 megapixels, the OV5640 module is clearly an upgrade over the original 2 megapixel module. It also has better low light performances, and for those reasons alone, it's probably worth the upgrade. However, one other feature that it has is one that I'm having a bit of problems understanding how to work, and that is the autofocus feature. Now Seed Studio clearly advertises this as an autofocus capable camera. They make mention of that several times in the ad, including including a paragraph that explains how autofocus is going to make your pictures clearer. But that's it. They have no other information about the autofocus feature. Now, there is a library out there, the OV5640 library for ESP32, that will allow you to use autofocus. However, I tried it with this camera, and I could not get it to work with the Xiao ESP32 S3 Sense board. I did change the pinouts to match the pinouts on this board but I still couldn't get the library to work and that just may be my inability to do it I'm not saying it won't work now I looked at the schematic for the board for the ESP32 S3 sense card that has the camera on it and there are indeed connections that support the autofocus and that's basically you need to provide three volts for the voice coil motor in order to work the autofocus and they do do that and so it 
is set up hardware wise to use autofocus but i'm not sure it's working in software now there is a hack for this camera apparently that lets it internally do all of the autofocus operations but that hack still requires an external driver and i'm not sure if it's there i did post the question to seed studio but that was about a week ago and they haven't got back to me on it so as to whether the autofocus is working on this camera i don't know let's just hook it up and see if maybe we can find out for our ourselves. And here's the setup that I'm using to test our upgraded camera for our Seduino Xiao. Now it's essentially the same setup I used to test the original camera. Once again, I've got everything mounted on a bunch of magnetic clips. I've got the large heat sink on the back of the camera. I found that this camera does indeed get quite warm and that the small heat sink really wasn't that adequate. So I've put a large heat sink onto this. Now when it's streaming, it gets warm enough to the point where I wouldn't really feel comfortable holding it in my hand. It's not that it would burn me, but it's actually very, very hot. Uh, I noticed that when the camera is attached to the board, but we're running a program that doesn't use the camera, there's still a little warmth from the camera, but not very much. But if you are mounting this thing, you're going to have to take heat dissipation into account. Now, once again, I'm focusing on my robot test target, and I've got um, the camera web server program open. Now, let's set the resolution over here to something a little larger. Let's maybe make at 800 by 600 and we'll go and we'll start our stream and if you look at our stream you might notice something's a little bit amiss here right now now take a look at the picture of what the camera should be seeing and what we're getting back and you can see that this is a mirror image of it for some reason this camera gives a mirror image of course you can correct that in the camera web server by just doing horizontal mirror and there we are and it actually does make a very nice picture now i'm not sure about the autofocus i don't know if i bring some something closer or further if it's going to focus on it. I don't think it does it by itself. The camera has autofocus capabilities, but you really need to be doing something in software. It can give you the autofocus signals and it can accept them, but I don't think it can do it itself. It does have a good depth of field though. Everything does seem to appear in focus. Uh, let's just give it a different target and see if maybe we can check that out. This is uh, eye chart, so to speak. It's a standard chart for for looking at eyes, for examining them. I'll just bring it in a bit closer to the camera and we can see if it tries to focus. The focus stays pretty good, but I don't know if it's autofocus or again if it's just a good depth of field. But at either rate, it is a very good looking camera. The colors are very sharp. Uh, it seems to definitely pick up a bit more than the previous camera did. So it is a good upgrade. Just keep in mind that heat dissipation issue and you shouldn't have any problems with it. Now I decided to try and give this a bit more of a distance test. After all, I was only testing at a maximum distance of about 40 centimeters. So I put the camera on one end of my workshop on the end with my pegboard, and I stood myself on the other end with my focus target. My focus target is what I use when I film myself in the workshop. And as I moved back and forth, I could see no autofocus action. An interesting note in the video that the camera is seeing, you can also see the video monitor that I'm watching the camera web server on and if you look really carefully right below it you can also see the screen on the video recorder but that aside it doesn't really seem to be auto focusing for me and I look forward to getting some more information from Seed Studio so that we can actually get the autofocus working. Now, in conclusion, I really did like the Ciduino Chao ESP32 S3 Sense Board, although I wish they'd come up with a shorter name for it, because having to say Ciduino Chao ESP32 S3 Sense all the time was getting kind of monotonous. Maybe they could take a cue off of people like Arduino, who name boards like Unos and Nanos. But naming aside, I thought it was a really nice little board. It was a very high-quality build, and it is indeed an excellent value. Now, we have to remember 
that you can also buy this ESP32 S3 board as a separate board and when you do you'll find that it's about the most inexpensive way of getting into an ESP32 S3 board so it's a great deal. Now I wish there'd been a bit more documentation about the autofocus on the camera expansion and that camera expansion is something that I think you really need to look at carefully. It does indeed give you a 5 megapixel camera but it runs very very hot when you're streaming video. For photography applications though I think it would be excellent. Now if you want to get more information about the Seduino Shao board that we looked at today you'll find that on the article in the dronebotworkshop.com website and of course there is a link right below this video to that article. When you're on the website please consider signing up for my newsletter. It's not a sales letter. Something I send out every now and then just to let you know what's going on here in the workshop. And of course, if you want to discuss this product, the DroneBot Workshop Forum is the best place to do that. The forum is free to sign up for, and you'll be able to discuss this with a lot of like-minded individuals who can also help you out with your electronics projects. And finally, if you haven't, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I make videos about electronics, and I'm sure you'll enjoy them. And all you need to do to subscribe is hit that little red subscribe button and also click on the bell notification and assuming that you've enabled notifications, you'll get notified every time I make a new video. So until we meet the next time, please take good care of yourself, stay safe out there, and I will see you again very soon here in the DroneBot Workshop. Goodbye for now.